I'm going to be talking to you about PubMed for a few minutes here. This is an introduction to PubMed just to get you a sense for what's there and how to search it. There's lots more detail in our how class as well as you could also obtain that if you met with a librarian. I will go ahead and start with a, um, how to get to it through the Hardin Library webpage. You can also get to it from any of the University of Iowa library pages through the database list, but from the Hardin Library it's pretty easy to get to it from under popular resources. When you click on it you will get an option you will get the prompt to put in your Hawk ID and password if you're off campus. You'll also then see this UI LIB at the end of it, which is telling you that you're connecting with the full text um, with, that's in our collection, all the journals that we have in full text. So what is in PubMed is primarily biosciences literature and biomedical literature, really covering clinical medicine very well. Um, also covers allied health, um, so therapies as well as nursing fairly well, but there are some other resources that cover those, those disciplines maybe even a little bit better. But primarily you're getting um, journal literature, not a whole lot of books. It's primarily journal literature. If you see Medline referred to, that is a large subset of, of what's in PubMed that's been categorized with medical subject terms, which I will just talk about very briefly, but I won't show you today. That will be in our class, however, if you attend that. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick search in here. Um, we're going to be looking for diabetes and exercise, and we're going to look at outcomes. If you see the suggestions that it gives you, um, don't necessarily think that those suggestions are, are uh, good ideas. They're just kind of suggestions based on what's been recently entered. So you don't necessarily feel like you should have to choose those. Um, this is a very, very broad search. And so you can see I do have it filtered right now. I'm going to go ahead and clear that. It's even broader without a filter. So I have too many results by far. And so one of the things that we run into is we see that people um, do a search like this that's very, very broad, and it's not really what they want. Um, so they Thinking about the question and narrowing it down to improve the precision of your results is a really good idea. A lot of times I see people come up with a broad search like this and then put lots of filters on there to narrow it, which is better to think about how to narrow the question um, so that you're capturing all the literature that's really about that. So for example, um, with diabetes, maybe I'm looking specifically for type 2 diabetes. Um, and I'm thinking about, you know, maybe walking um, as a form of exercise, and then I want to look at blood, you know, blood glucose levels and how that affects, that's an outcome that's really important. So this should narrow it down quite a bit, made a huge difference. Um, when So when you're thinking about um, you know, what your question is, sometimes you have to kind of preview some of your results to figure out what you have to work with, but it's really important to kind of come up with the most specific um, terminology that you can. However, you don't necessarily want to use acronyms. <laughs> so I will, tell, I will often advise people to kind of um, avoid exclusively using acronyms like this one, which doesn't make a huge difference in this case, but you can see it did reduce it a bit. You can always click on the advanced to see the difference in the number of results. So it went down by a bit. So I'm going to stick with the um, I'm going to stick with the spelled out term, and that's something that we would advise you to always do is spell out your terms. Um, when you're looking at your results, you might want to think about um, changing the display options and also looking at the way that they're sorting. You can change it to the best match. That's the algorithm that will be the default. Um, I actually like to change it to the most recent, but you might want to play around with that. Be aware that you have the option to do that. And then the other one is to change it to the abstract view. That allows you to see the full abstract as well as the UI link button, which will take you to the full text or let you know if we don't have it. Um, anything that's been supported by, by NIH funding has the free full text PMC, uh, which is a good way to get to the full text. You n won't necessarily see that for everything. So for the second one, for example, if I were to click on the UI link button, it would um, either take me to the publisher page, or in this case, it's directly actually putting the PDF, it's downloading it for me. So it will, um, depending on, on how we have it, it will do that for you. Um, underneath of each record, you can take a look at um, underneath of that to see if you want to use the site tool. You can change the option here, so I could, you know, copy and paste the AMA um, formatted version of this reference, or there's four different styles in here. You should check it over to be sure that it's accurate, because it's not always 100% accurate, so just check it over. 
The share is going to give you a nice link that you can then copy and paste and you can share that with somebody or you can make a list for yourself in a, another document if you want to do it that way. You can also create an account if you wanted to save your search as well, but sometimes people like to just create links and do it that way. Um, so on the left-hand side, there are tons of filters. I would encourage you to stay away from the free full text because that's only going to show you what's available if you are um, not affiliated with the University of Iowa, so that, that which is free through PMC. So it's a great thing, but if you are um, accessing from the library page, you want to make sure you're seeing all the literature. Um, and even if you're not, it's probably good for you to see all the literature as well. So there's lots of filters, um, and you might want to be careful. You don't want to overuse them, but you can take a look at what's available. I do like this clinical study filter. Um, so if you are looking for a specific type, you know, if you're looking for all types of studies, this clinical study filter is very helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that and that gets me down to 112. And then you can see I have a clipboard up here and I'm gonna go ahead and maybe add a few more items. Sorry to scroll there. I'm gonna add a few more items to my clipboard. I'll add just maybe a couple more. Um, and then go back to the top here and then send to clipboard and now I should have four of them there. They also will show up in the advanced search at the bottom. So then you can do something with all four of these. It does save for eight hours, but you could email them, uh, you can send, save it to a file, you can also save it, send it to, um, to EndNote if you're using EndNote or another reference manager. So I'm going to click back on the PubMed.gov icon. The other ways to search it are through the advanced um, link, which allows you to combine your searches. And so it's really good for when you're trying to construct a comprehensive search. It uh, also allows you to do a very specific search by where your keywords are. Um, lots of different options here, and we cover that in our, in our How class. And the third way is to search by the medical subject headings and this allows you to really be more precise and get results that are more relevant to what you are probably looking for. It narrows things down. So those are the other things that we cover during the class as well as we talk about how to create the account. So the login at the top right that allows you to save your searches and save your um, records and collections. So I will go ahead and stop there and encourage you to get more information either by contacting your librarian or attending a class in the future. Um, and thank you for listening.